time. Hello, judges. Welcome. My name is Junior Vargas, and today I will share with you two delicious coffee, my story and a message. Let's start with my story. I am originally from Peru, where coffee and I have had a long friendship, beginning at my family's coffee farm in Cusco. Working at every stage of the coffee value chain, from producers, traders to roasters, and now as a barista, has given me a unique perspective of coffee as a product and as an industry. I remember how damaging was coffee production, and I thought something needed to change. How we as an industry manage coffee production has concerned me since. Sustainability was not a term we used to say before. I wish we had. Judges, my message today is simple. Create value at origin, be economically viable, and environmentally sustainable, while at the same time, having a positive impact at each stage of the coffee value chain. Today I will share with you two delicious coffee from the same farm that offers complexity, story, and value. And all this together aligns perfectly with my message. Today I'm using the same recipe for all my courses, 20 grams in and 40 grams out, extracted at 91 degrees Celsius. These coffees are from Luis Marcelino, from Aroma Nativo Farm in Armenia, Colombia. This farm is located at 1,500 meters above the sea level. Now, this is for my signature drink. I'll come back to this later. Now, judges, I would like to invite you and connect to the variety and the process of this coffee. I think it is important to experience the individual aromas of this coffee and build them into your aroma library so you can connect them easily to the cup you are served. There are two jars in front of you. Please pick up jar number one and smell it. And be curious about the aroma you will experience in your milk beverage. This is a honey processed green tip geisha. It's an amazing coffee. I personally love it. Let's go to the second jar and repeat the process. This is a Colombia Barretto, but not as you might know it. It went through three different processing methods. First, 120 hours anaerobic fermentation in, a, in cherry. Second, pulp and fermented for another 36 hours in a sealed barrel. And third, and the most important, the twist in the second fermentation was to add lactic bacteria that was isolated from the mucilage of the green tip geisha, creating a genetic connection between those two coffees. Luis has taken the lactic bacteria of his best geisha to elevate the humble Colombia varietals to a higher quality level. He was able to increase the natural sugars as well as the quality of the acidity those creating more value for his coffee without harming the environment. Through fermentation, we can achieve a new dimension of flavors and aromas. And that's exactly what Louis did. I personally love this coffee because it keeps the identity and the character of the coffee intact and alive. I will be using this coffee for my espresso courses and my signature drink. This coffee was roasted by my friends at Meron Coffee Roaster in Romania, Transylvania, 14 days ago. The roasting time for this coffee for the Colombia was 14, uh, nine minutes with 14% of development time. And for the Geisha was nine minutes 30 with 18% of development time. With this roast profile, 
and the recipe I have chosen, I have found an incredible balance and complex cup experience, which also maximizes the three characteristics that truly represent this coffee, sweetness, brightness, and flavor clarity. Please don't drink it yet, just evaluate the crema. We are going to share together the same experience. That's for you, enjoy. Once again, this is for you. Enjoy, and that's for you. We are going to stir six times to mix the flavors. Just use the spoons from the glass and wait for it to cool down to about 60 degrees. In the meantime, I will share with you the taste experience. Just place in the black, yeah? Thanks, great. I will share the taste experience. It's a medium to high sweetness with a medium acidity, a vibrant one, a medium bitterness. The taste experience is supported by clear flavors of lemongrass, bergamot, acacia honey, black tea, and a hint of lavender. Now, please, let's go for the first sip and enjoy. There we go. The delicate flavors of this espresso were masked by the temperature. You should now be able to fully experience the beauty of this amazing process from Louis Farm. Please go ahead for the second sip and enjoy. Thank you. Great, time for our milk beverage. Espresso milk seems forever destined to meet, in the, to meet in the cup. However, in order to create a creamy and sweet milk beverage, we must have a balanced ingredients with the, right, uh, with the right ratio, intensity, and density. My first ingredient for this milk beverage is my, uh, my espressos. My second ingredient is the milk. I'm using 25% of our regular local milk, and 75% of the freeze distilled milk. This technique reduces water content in the milk and increases the sugar, fats, and proteins. This will match the intensity and density of my espresso enhancing the sweetness as well as the mouthfeel perception. The taste experience is rich, buttery mouthfeel, like a melted ice cream. It will be filling with a long-lasting sweet floral finish. The flavors. Milk chocolate, salted caramel, shortbread, and a hint of lavender. Right. And the ratio I'm using for this milk beverage, espresso to milk, is one to four. And the temperature you will enjoy is about 50 degrees. Right. So, let's move for the first. Beautiful. That's for you. Enjoy. One more time, that's for you. Enjoy. Sorry. Here we go. 
So we move it in this side. So once again, this will be a rich, sweet, with a, thank you, with a buttery mouthfeel. It will be filling with a low lasting sweet floral finish. Beautiful, that's for you. Enjoy. And look for this beautiful noise of lavender, milk chocolate, salted caramel, and shortbread. Amazing. That's for you. Enjoy. Great. I'm ready with that. Nice. So, a bit more for you. What a privilege it's for me to serve this amazing coffee. That for me is already a game changer. And now I get to take it with you a step further. The base of my final course is five shots of this amazing Colombian varietal together with four specific ingredients that links to the citric, malic, and tartaric acid from this espresso. First, I'm adding 20 grams of a freshly distilled red apple syrup. The apples are from Australia. Second, I'm adding 30 grams of freshly distilled white grapes. These grapes are from Italy. And third, I'm using 20 grams of a black grape syrup, freeze the still. Those come from Austria. So let me explain how I made this. I have pressed each ingredient separately and then fermented for 30 hours below five degrees Celsius, just to avoid producing alcohol. And then freeze the still twice to isolate the unique non-volatile acidities, having as a result a complex and balanced fruit syrup. Now, I will add my last ingredient, which is 20 grams of a natural yogurt. This ties all of the ingredients together. Smoothly binding the volatile and non-volatile acids, allowing for each of them to shine in my signature drink. Now blend in for 8 to 10 seconds to create a creamy texture in your mouthfeel perception that comes alive as the liquid drains over the cold brew ice sphere. The sphere releases subtle aromatics. Thank you. The flavors of my, of my signature drink will be pink grapefruit, panela, Right. Wild strawberry and a hint of lemongrass. It will be creamy with a long sweet aftertaste. Judges, there are many ways to create value in the coffee industry. Thank you. One of them is through competitions. That's why I love to compete. However, Producers can create and add value to the processing method. And I believe this is the right place and people to amplify this message. Please, scroll three times. 
and let's cheers. Salute. Thank you. Time.